The War of the Realms has kicked off, and over the next few months, there will be more than 20 different comic books connecting to the Marvel event across the entire universe. With such a massive crossover going on, the question becomes, what do I read? Hopefully, we can shed a little bit of light on that question and answer it for you. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. Today, we're going to be talking about the War of the Realms, but not about the death, destruction, and chaos that Malekith has brought to the Ten Realms. Instead, we're taking a look at the kind of damage that will be done to your wallet if you intend to chase everything down. The following is going to be a list of every announced title that ties into the War of the Realms in some way, and we will separate them into different categories. General titles will have a passing interaction with the event, and might simply jump in for an issue or two so they can acknowledge what's happening. Happening. Optional titles will have slightly deeper ties to the event and may impact characters in a lasting way, but they're still dicey options. These are mostly miniseries created specifically to add to the comic count for War of the Realms and won't be around after June. The recommended titles are tied directly into the storyline and may have a meaningful connection for a longer period of time. Finally, it would be the required reading which makes these books mandatory for anyone following along with War of the Realms. To start things off, we have the general titles, which can easily be avoided if they aren't on your pull list. If they are a book that you read regularly, expect the storyline to sidetrack for a month or two, and then get right back into what they were doing, as long as the main storyline doesn't kill off some other characters. I'm looking at you, Civil War II. Captain Marvel from Kelly Thompson connects to War of the Realms in June with issues 6 and 7, which are releasing in the same month, so her battle with the Enchantress will likely be a short one. Champions joins the battle in May with issue number 5, and this one sees the older Cyclops fighting side by side with his former teammates. This should be a nice reunion for fans of the series, but expect things to return to normal inside July. Deadpool also takes his two-issue detour in June, starting with issue number 13, when he starts fighting trolls in Australia. Hopefully Scotty Young can lean into the story and create some solid comedy for the readers of the title. Fantastic Four number 10 also comes out in May, and that's a single stop in the storyline as the next issue goes back to business as usual. With the recent return of Fantastic Four, I'm surprised they even tied into the event, but there have been some delays and it might have been an effort to fill in while the main story arcs are being completed. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number 43 is also tying into War of the Realms for a single issue, as well as Superior Spider-Man number 7, which also crosses over with West Coast Avengers. Squirrel Girl actually spends a little bit more time within the war, kicking off in issue number 43, but I have to wonder what kind of consequences it'll have. Then, to round out the general comics, we have Tony Stark Iron Man number 12 and 13, written by Gail Simone. I almost put these in the optional category because they cover has Iron Man fighting a dragon, which is awesome, but with a guest writer, I just don't know how much it'll impact the story that Dan Slott is telling. Could be a cool side adventure, though, so keep your eyes on it. Now, when we talk about optional titles, they're typically books created just for an event, so they can be hit or miss depending on the creative teams. Venom number 13 recruits Cullen Bunn to spin Tales of the Symbiote and how it will evolve during the War of the Realms. With it leaving Eddie in issue number 12, there are a number of things up in the air, and I wonder how Cullen Bunn's going to attack it. Venom has been a stellar series so far, and I would hate to see this reduce its momentum that it's already built. Asgardians of the Galaxy number 8 is another Cullen Bunn creation, and with Asgardians like Valkyrie, Scourge, and Angela as part of the team, you expect them to be up to their elbows in Dark Elf blood during this whole thing. However, they just recently became aware of the events, and Kid Loki, a member of their team, seemingly faded from existence. I don't believe that for one second, but it does call into question how important these characters might be to the overall storyline. We also have Giant Man, which is a three-issue miniseries telling the story of all the characters that can enlarge themselves, like Goliath, Atlas, Ant-Man, and Giant Man, as they battle against the army of Frost Giants. It's an interesting concept, but that might not be enough. Journey into Mystery is a little more interesting, though, since it's powered by the creative team behind the Adventure Zone. It might not be what everyone is expecting, which is half the reason to kind of check it out. The only reason it didn't make it into the recommended is due to the unknown nature of the story that it's trying to tell. We also have New Agents of Atlas, written by Greg Pak, which is focused on Asian superheroes and actually will be the debut for Swordmaster and Arrow, which have been published in China previously, but they are making their North American first appearances, so Western comics finally get a taste of them. Frank Castle also gets his own miniseries as well, lasting three issues, but it will actually lead into a new miniseries in July called Punisher Kill Crew. Evidently, Jerry Dugan enjoyed writing this mini enough that he felt that there was more story to tell, which is a good thing. Also, the League of Realms, which was introduced almost five years ago inside Thor the God of Thunder, is getting its own miniseries, but instead of Thor, they're joined by Spider-Man. I would have to put this under recommended, but the League of the Realms is an acquired taste even for Thor readers, so it might not necessarily be for everybody. Marvel also introduced three Strike Force one-shots, implying that these teams are going to take the fight to the realms instead of standing their ground on Midgard. The Dark Elf Realm sees She-Hulk, Punisher, Ghost Rider, Lady Freya, and Blade invade Malekith's home turf. 
the Land of Giants brings Captain America, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Logan, and Spider-Man to Jotunheim. Then the War Avengers grabs Weapon H, Captain Marvel, Captain Britain, Black Widow, Venom, Sif, Deadpool, and Winter Soldier for their undercover and overpowered missions. Since these are one-shots, pick them up with caution, but the creative teams are all pretty solid. Uncanny X-Men is also getting a miniseries, which will have the mutants participate in the defense of Midgard, at least what's left of them. Now we have our recommended titles, which has really narrowed things down. Thor is a given since it's the title that really started everything off, and I would be surprised if some major events didn't take place within the title. Jason Aaron is also writing The Avengers, making it a highly recommended title. A good rule of thumb is that any title written by the architect of the major event is a place to find some relevant content. They are also invested in the story and want to write things that matter. Using that as a guideline, my last recommendation would be War of the Realms War Scrolls, which is a mini-series from a variety of writers, but Jason Aaron is adding content to it, and it also recruited Chip Zdarsky and others. It might not be the most direct connection, but it's close enough. When we finally finish things off, the only real required reading is War of the Realms itself, which will have all the biggest and most important moments. While other events might take place, it doesn't make sense for a major plot development to take place outside of the main storyline. Could you imagine picking up War of the Realms number 4 only to find that a defining moment took place in a completely unrelated book that's only tying in? No. It's not going to happen. You're going to have a lot of fun with the event if you just stick with the main title, but if you add context from Thor and Avengers, you should have a well-rounded understanding of the event. Everything else is really up to you and how much you want to see your favorite characters fighting things like trolls, dark elves, and frost giants. But I want to know what you guys think. Is 20 plus titles too many or are you just going to stick with the core? Do you even care? Hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books and more.